Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today I'm going to be doing something really different. And um, first I want to tell you what canvas I'm using. I'm using the um, Frederick's Red Label Canvas, okay? It's a beautiful, beautiful canvas. It's, it's um, already coated with a primer, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, because I am using, in today's painting, chalky gesso, okay? Now, usually gesso, historically, was only used to prime um, canvas and wood and any other surfaces because it would make the paint not soak in, so it would give you a nice, smooth texture. Um, so. What I usually do is, for example, when I do my oil paintings, um, I do a coat of gesso, let it dry, sand it, and I do that two more times. I know that my instructor, Todd Casey, um, he does it five times, okay? So it just depends on how smooth you want your canvas. So all you have to do is you paint on the gesso, you sand it very lightly, and then you do another coat, and you do it as many times as you want until your canvas is as smooth as you want. So what I want to do today is I'm actually using this chalky gesso as regular paint. I'm just not priming with it. I'm doing the whole painting in it, OK? It's a lot of fun. It gives a beautiful vintage effect, especially in this um, chalky gesso um, because of that chalky look. It's, it's really beautiful. All right, so what I do want to show you is before I do oil paintings, this is uh, the gesso that I use. This is just a plain piece of wood. Behind it, I used a light gray um, chalky gesso. After that dried, I sanded, did it again. I only did a couple of layers on this, but I want to show you that then I went over and put the oil, I painted my oil um, fruit here, on top of the gesso, okay? So you can use it, even the oil painters can use it, um, even though it's chalky, okay? Gesso, gesso, you can use it either way. So like I said, today I'm gonna do a nice little vintage looking, uh, vintage inspired painting, um, some abstract flowers. They don't have to be roses that are very detailed. I just am gonna change the colors around and give the illusion of some roses, okay? So I'm gonna get started because I have a lot to paint and um, the colors will roll by uh, later on. And um, first I'm starting with the traditions Number one, flat brush. This is a big brush, all right? And you can see that I use some greens and some grays, white, beige, and I won't be able to replicate that painting exactly, but I just wanna show you how I approached it. And, um, oh, before I go on, I also am using Americana. I have two different colors, avocado and the blush pink that I mixed in with the gesso. You can use other acrylics to mix in with them to change the colors or to tint or tone them, make them darker or lighter, okay? So first, I see on my right side, I have this nice green, all right? So I'm just going to start flip-flopping it back and forth. Again, this canvas is so nice, you can see how well it picks up this paint really well. Now this is not a real, real smooth canvas, so I didn't do another coat of gesso on it, but for what I'm doing today, it's fine. Just wanna fix this a little bit. Looks like I'm moving a little bit. There we go. Okay. Back to my green. I'm just loading up my brush, putting a lot of paint on there. And I'm going to paint this on the whole background, and then I'm just going to draw on a quick vase. I'm not too worried even if the vase doesn't come out so symmetrical. Just the idea to show you um, how we can do a nice vintage painting very easily. I noticed I put a little bit of beige, so I'm not washing my brush. Just go and putting a little bit of beige just to waken that up a little bit. Okay, you can see it just changes it a little bit. And on the other side, I started to put some white in, and I'm just gonna blend it in a little. If you work fast with this, you can blend it, okay? Even a chalky gesso can be blended. And back and forth. I don't have to worry about having getting too much coverage in the middle here because I'm going to be putting that vase on top of it. I just want to get some nice coloring in. I see I have a little bit of beige over here. I'll go back again, not even, not washing the brush or anything, okay? So of course this one's not going to be exact. No two paintings can be exact. I just want to get some nice coloring in there. Go back a little bit with the white, brighten this up. Oh, I got a little green in there too. That's okay, gonna mix it right in. Then I'll just stand a little bit back from it so I can take a peek. It's hard to see when I'm right on top of it. And that looks pretty good just for a pretty background. Okay, got nice little nice color in there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna come across and make this table, all right? So I'll go into a little bit of gray. Now this gray is dark, 
So I can mix that just at the end of my, my little uh, puddle here. You can see I'm not going to lift it up because they will drip a little. I'll lift it up a little. Hopefully you can see that. Just making a little pale gray. All right, so you can go back and forth and mix your colors accordingly. I'll just make a little tabletop here. All right, I'll stand back a little, see if I got it pretty straight. It might be pretty straight, but you get where I'm going with this, I'm sure. So, same thing, I'm just going to get some colors. Now, since the table runs flat, I'll go back and forth. And I have some, some beige. There we go. I have some green. So I'm just pulling in the same colors just to get a little color harmony amongst the painting here, amongst it. Go back to the beige again. And then, like I said, while it's wet, we can still blend a little bit. There we go. You can see how I'm pushing a little harder. When I'm blending, I'm just pushing. That's all I'm doing. I don't want to squish the brush down there. We don't want to go like this with the brush. We want to make sure we use it on the flat so we don't uh, damage the brush. All right. And with these, with these brushes, always put them in the water when you're not using them. I think I say that every show. You don't want to get the paint up in the ferrule because then it dries and it can ruin your brush. And these are beautiful brushes, so we want to keep them as long as we can. There we go. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for a table, for a little bit of a tabletop. Let me just fix this top over here. All righty, there we go. So what I want to do now is this is already starting to dry. Okay, that's one good thing about the, uh, the chalky gesso. It does, um, it dries pretty fast, okay? So um, if you're a very slow painter, it will teach you how to paint a little faster if you want to. Otherwise, you could actually use a little medium. I sometimes use the Vintage Effects, Deco Art uh, Vintage Effects paint underneath and um, to give it a layer, and that keeps it going a little longer. So now, I'm not using this big brush right now, so I'm just going to put it in my water bucket. I don't want to take a chance with it. So right now, I have a number four. I have to look all right, to see what number is on there. This is a number four round, all right? And I'm just going to dip it in a little water. I don't want it to be dry. I'm just going to pat it on a paper towel. What I want to do is I just want to draw out my little vase. Now, the best way to do this, of course, would be to use a template to use regular measuring structure, but just for now, I'm just going to draw it out, hoping, hope I could get a little bit straight, okay? I'm going to go into some of the, um, the gray. I just want to make like a pale gray, just so I can see it. I don't want too much of an outline, but of course, if I did make a dark outline, I can, I can always fix it. I just want to make sure that I can see it. So I'm just rolling, rolling the brush. Anytime you use a round brush, you, you should roll it out, okay? So I rolled it out. Now, I'm just going to take a little guess here and make a little, a little top to my vase, come down a little bit. Um, I'm just going to draw it out, and then if it's not straight, I will try to even it out a little bit. Because this is a, it's hard for, to do it on this angle, okay? But like I said, I can go over it and over it a couple times until I straighten it out. All right, so we'll take a look and see. And... Eh, not so bad, okay? So as long as I got it on there, when I start to paint this vase in, which I'm going to do right now, then I can start to straighten it out a little bit, all right? Then I will put this, this handle on it, you know, like this. It's, I guess it's like a jug vase. I'll do that afterwards. This way I can try to straighten it out a little bit while I'm painting, okay? So I think that I'm going to go to a number 10 flat brush. I may change it back and forth. So what I want to do to start is I just want to make a pale gray. I'm just mixing some of the white with a little bit of gray, and I'll just start painting this in, and going around a little, and then after I get some color on, then I can kind of see if I need to, where I need to straighten it out. So I just want to go a little bit slower, all right? So I'll do some gray, some white, and then I can do some highlights, okay? So right now, I just want to show you that this is easy, because we're just, I'm just painting it in. The way we make it look a little bit three-dimensional is by changing the color dark light, dark light. All right, and that's how we do that. So back to my gray. A lot of this I'm going to be covering up. If, if I have a part I don't like, believe me, I'll just paint the flower right over it. <laughs> um, just in case. Simplest way to do it. There we go. Just doing the outline, getting some of that paint in there. And you can see how nice it's covering up the bottom, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, let's see, get more paint. And I don't want to make this paint um, 
too heavy because I do want it to dry so I can continue. There we go, a little bit more gray and I'm almost getting it covered now. Just about covered. And I'm just getting into those, the little groove of the canvas and then I will step back because I know that it's not too symmetrical and we'll try to make it a little more symmetrical. Okay, so I'm gonna have to step back right in front of it. All right, so here I go. I've got to step right back in front because it's the only way that I can see. And that might be close to being good enough just for today's lesson because I do want to show you how I do those abstract flowers. And I think I could do a little better. I keep saying it might be good enough, but you know what? I think I could do a little better making that a little bit more symmetrical. Sorry about being in front of that for a second. And again, I will step back again and take a peek at what I have. And still, <laughs> it's still pretty off. Let me try again. And I can see right over here, I just need to open this up to match the other side a little bit more. But see, that's all you have to do. If you have the patience, of course, at home you'll have more time and you can go ahead and you can get yourself a template because my vase will keep getting bigger and bigger until I actually manage to straighten it out. And that's okay. That's not a big deal, okay? So just kind of fixing it up. I like the way that white looks down there, so I may actually leave that just like that. I'll stand back a little bit. Okay, so I can see where I'm off on this side again. I'll just come over here, straighten it out, and we'll see how that is. Now, like I said, I'm not worried about the gray coloring right now because we're gonna change that around a little bit. Okay, so. I can come over here, we'll put a leaf over there, cover up that whole side. So what I did with the vase is after I got some, some gray and some white on there, I actually did come in with a little bit of the pink, just so it kind of looks like the roses are just maybe, you know, they're causing a little bit of a reflection in the vase. I also came in with a little bit of the green that I'm gonna be putting into the leaves. And I, you see, I'm not even, I'm not changing the colors at all. I mean, I'm not washing the brush, sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go. Now I'll get a little bit of white. And I can always highlight a little bit more later. Okay, for now, I wanna show you how easy this is. And this is already starting to dry, okay, which does make it easy for me right now because I am being quick with this. All right, and then I will put a little white and put a little white along the edge. I have some white coming this way, some light, so that's where I will try to put a little white in that, in that side. Lighten that up a little bit, and there we go. Just a quick one. And same thing, just as the way you could put highlights in, you can come in and you could put dark spots in too. And that'll just give it a little bit more dimension, okay? Just something quick. Just wanted to show you how you can do a quick vase. Of course, you'll try to make your symmetrical, okay? Um, let me put a little handle in there. So I'm gonna go back to my other, my, my, let me see. No, I think I'm gonna use a flat brush again. All right, just getting a little bit of the gray like I've been using, gray and white. And just to make a handle. Oh, it looks like I got right in that green. That's okay. So now we have a couple highlights in there. We have some dark spots and highlights. So that's all. I mean, you could work on that. Like I said, make it, make it fit the vase more you know, as wide as you want it, all right? Just the idea to get that in there so it kind of looks like a jug vase, all right? So I'm gonna go on to the flowers because that's, I know that's what everybody likes to see is those flowers. So for the flowers, I used the flat brush as well, okay? So I put some leaves on first, then I went to the flowers. So I'm going to just use some of the avocado, okay? But I am going to mix a little bit of white in there because I want this to look chalky on every aspect of the painting. I want that chalky look, all right? So I'm gonna go back and forth between the white and the green until I get a nice green color, okay? So I'm gonna start putting some leaves on. All I did with the leaves is I just had a leaf in my mind, the shape of what a leaf looks like, and that's all I did. I don't want you to feel like um, you have to structure a leaf. You can just get some very natural leaves in like this, just thinking, okay, this is kind of a shape of a leaf. And really, that's all you have to do. It just get the shape of a leaf in there. I need a little more paint. So I'm gonna put a few leaves in. And you can see I'm just wiggling some leaves. Again, thinking in my mind, that's kind of a leaf shape, all right? And we'll get one over here. So I'm just randomly putting them there. And then I'll go back and put in 
some um, some roses, a couple rosebuds. You could see I did have um, a leaf, a couple of leaves coming right over the vase. Okay, need a little more paint. Like I said, this kind of dries fast, um, but that's nice in this kind of painting. Oops, and look, I got a little white on there. Gonna leave it. Same, just wiggling, filling in the leaf. Very simple. Then I'll just make some stems, but let me do a few more leaves few more leaves and then we'll, we'll probably be pretty good. Put another little one over here. We want to make the leaves different sizes. All right, and you can see this is dry already, okay? So this is very good to do demos and all. It dries nice and fast. You could do a little quick demo. So you can see I'm just rubbing in some leaves. All right, I'm going to take a look. I have one coming over a couple coming over the vase, which is good, like I said. If you have a spot you don't like, just come right in with a couple little leaves, cover it right up. So the whole top of that vase that was crooked anyway is now covered. Okay, so that's just a way that you actually can come in and fix it up and change it around a little. Now, I want to fix some of these jagged edges. I don't like too much of a jagged edge. I don't want it to look too dry, okay? So if, when I see I have like a jagged edge, I'll just come back again with a little more paint and I can just fill that in and fix it up a little. Now that's something, okay, too, that you would do when you have time. When you see a spot that you want to change, you go back and change it. And I'll see how much time I have to change it when I'm done putting in some flowers, okay? So I have a couple more leaves to put in and then I will go on with the flowers. And again, just getting some of the green Okay, so you can see what I'm doing, just kind of saying, okay, that kind of looks like a leaf shape. All right, not trying to think about it too much, just want to get some leaves in. Now, I can go back after I put some flowers in, and I can put a couple more leaves where I think I need it. All right, so I have a couple of leaf shapes in, well, quite a few leaf shapes, all right, and I'll leave that for now, and you can just see just the way it is, all right. I'm going to just wash out my brush just a little bit. And the reason I'm washing out a little is it actually felt like it was getting a little dry. So now it's nice and damp again. Now, the way I did these um, roses, like I said, um, is not, they're not detailed. All right. So I just took a little bit of the gray. I'm going to hold this up. I took a little gray over here and I mixed some of this blush color. I wanted to get a little bit of darkness to show some depth. So say I'm gonna put a big rose right here. I'm gonna just put a little bit of darkness right here. See what I did? I just rubbed it on just like that, okay? I'm gonna wipe off my brush and do a little bit of a value change. In other words, I'm going to just move this down and you can see I'm mixing some of the gray in. I'm changing it a little bit. Now, all I did was I just came in here and just painted with the flat edge, just made a little, kind of opened up U underneath it. Then I came in and changed it again and got a little pinker. See how that's just a little bit of pinker? Pinkier, I should say, and I made another U. Then I came and I put a little white in there and came down a little lower. Okay, so you can see it's just giving an illusion. It's not, not a real rose, all right? If I see my colors are not separate enough, then I can go back. I may come up here and put a little color in here. See how that pops that out? Change from dark light, dark light, and that's all you have to do to have an illusion of the um, rose, all right? So I'm going to go and do a couple more and I can see that's pretty light there, so I'm gonna just come in and put some, some white mixed with my pink there, okay? And then I will go back again, because I can see I need some darker spots, all right? So I'm just making a little bit of a, a gray again. I wanna do another one over here maybe hanging, so I'm just putting that top in. I may wanna come in here, put a little gray, okay? So in between, you can come in and do some dark. Okay, see what I just did? So that gives that um, layering, okay? So that's definitely good for layering. If dark light, dark light, all right? So now I'm gonna go back to the pink again. Get some pink in. Notice I'm just going around what would be the little bud, okay? I'm gonna add a little white in there again. All right, and just going around it. I'll go back to the pink. 
So really, I'm not doing um, dark down to light because I am going back and forth, all right? And I'll do a little bit dark again. Just the idea to get some depth. I don't see too much depth in that, so what I would do is take a little bit of dark and maybe come in here with a little bit of dark. All right, and that's how I did this, this whole painting. So I have the two roses there. Mine, mine over there were a little bigger, so I want to fill it in a little more. So you know what? I'm going to make this one even bigger. I want to just kind of fill that in more in that spot. So see? Then I'll just go again a little darker. All right, a little dark. You can see I'm just kind of going underneath. See how that? I made it bigger. Now it has more depth. I'll go back in the white again. I'm not washing the brush. The whole time I did not wash the brush, okay? So you can see that's how I'm just making them bigger. I'm kind of doing a U underneath, all right? So I think that looks pretty good. Now I'll go and do one more. One more big rose the same way, all right? So I think we'll put this one um, over here. Okay, so there's my little dark spot there, all right? I'll just dip in the pink again. Go around it. Then make it a little darker again. So I could go dark, light, dark, light. You have to kind of base it when you do it. So I don't see that color too much. So I'll go back in the, in the dark again. And I'm going to show you my palette again. And that might be too dark. That's OK. I could blend that a little. But still, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'll go back to that. What I want to do is I want to at least get one rosebud up here. OK? So this will be a little bit different. Because see, what I'm doing is I'm just making it a little tighter in there. So. That's it, making like a V around it, okay? And that would be the way you would make a little rosebud, okay? So you would fill it in with rosebuds and roses as much as you want. So this is light here, light. Maybe get a little more light here. Maybe put a little in. See what I'm doing now? I'm just going back and forth. So what I want to do is I want to get some stems in so you can see the painting more complete um, before my time is up. So I'm just washing that out a little. Um, I felt that the brush was getting a little bit dry. Okay, it was getting a little dry. So I'm just going back into my green, putting a little of the, the white. And I'm going to show you my palette again, okay? I took out way too much paint. This paint goes a long way. You don't have to take out as much as I did. But for the show, it's easier if I don't have to take the time to open my bottles back up. So I do put extra out. Okay, so there's some green. Notice I'm mixing it with the, the chalk, the chalky gesso, all right? And I could just come in from here on the chisel edge and just pull in, pull in some stems, okay? So if you see the stem doesn't go in a place that looks right to you, that's okay. Watch this. I'll just come in, put a couple more flowers in, a couple more uh, leaves in there. Okay, so that's one thing. I don't want you to feel that once it's on there, that's it, okay? There's a lot of things that you, you can do to fix things if you don't like something. Now, I think my little, up here by my little rosebuds, we can use a couple, a couple of little leaves. See, just wiggling, wiggling. I'm just kind of going with the flow. What I did also was I put a couple of, um, um, I guess it could be like a pinkish baby breath, okay? Just like a little illusion. All I did was come in and watch this. I just dabbed. All I'm doing is dabbing. I'm going right over the leaves. Okay? And where did I put that other one? Right here? A little bit of dabbing. Now, say that I don't like how this portion looks. No problem. You could just come right in, dab right over it. Okay? So I can, I, I would fill this in a little bit more. All right? But I, I think that you're getting the idea of it. I like the way this pink looks in here. Let me do a little something down here with this table in my last few minutes. I want to come in and put a little shadow in here. So I just went into the, the dark gray gesso. If I feel like it looks too dark, I could add a little white to it or a little beige. But you know what? I think this is OK. Going straight across, make it look like a little shadow. All righty. I also put some leaves, um, some rose petals, sorry, um, that looked like they were kind of falling down there with like a darker, um, darker blush color. So again, what I did with that is I just use some a little bit of gray and a lot of pink. And I made like a dull, dull, dull pink with that. And that's what I like about the chalky gesso. You can mix them together or you can add a little acrylic to it. All right. So same thing. I didn't have a format for the leaf, just coming in and just kind of 
wiggling it around until I get a couple of leaves in there. So like I said, this is an illusion painting. I didn't paint those roses exactly to form, okay? I just wanted to get a little bit of an illusion in there, all right? So I like this color. I'm gonna come here and move some of this around. So you see how you can do that? You can just kind of wing it a little bit. So the way that you get to the point where you can wing it is by practicing, all right? When you practice and, and just jump right into it and say, I'm just gonna do it, that's it, that's all you do. So I'm gonna put a couple of more rose buds now that I I think I have another minute. And I'll start again with the, the darker gray. I like to start with the dark on top. So maybe I would put a rosebud, uh, let's see, maybe over here. Okay, so there's a little bit of the dark. I would even make that a little darker. So I'm just dipping a little bit in there in the dark, right? And then while I have that dark on there, I can even go and put a little dark in there. Okay, liven it up a little bit. Every once in a while, I am dipping into the water. Okay, let's see. Uh, I forgot where I left off there. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I just went into the pink, and I'm just going to do like a little U around that, around that little rosebud. Then I'll go back into the gray with the, the pink and the white. Lighten it up a little. I mean, darken it up a little. You can see just a little illusion. Now I'll go into some white. So like again, the object is dark light, dark light in a painting like this, and that's how you get a little bit of a three-dimensional look without doing too much. And then like I said, when you have time, this rose I could even make bigger, when you have the time, you can go back and really, really fuss with it. See, I can come up and put a little more. So I think that you get the idea of how I'm doing this, okay? I'm going dark light, dark light. I'm just imagining the shape of, um, the shape of the roses, all right? Like I said, I did not do any detail. This one to me looks a little too round. So I could come in and change that a little. So that's what you'll do. The end, the last few minutes that you have while you're painting, in my last few minutes, I can just come in and make some changes. All right, so maybe I'll put some, some light in here. Some light in here. I'd like to make this one a little bigger and I'm going right over, okay? Now, I think that looks pretty good just to get this lesson across. I mean, that's what I wanted. I wanted you to get that less, this lesson across because it is, it is a fun lesson. Let me get a little more color in here. I think we need a little more color. Okay, so I think that's it for me today. I hope that you like this um, chalky gesso look. I mean, it does look really nice framed. Um, you can even paint the frame with the chalky gesso. So um, everything matches, depends. If you have that shabby chic look, um, this is beautiful for a shabby chic, you know, shabby chic look. So thank you so much for tuning in. Take a look at my other shows. And um, I hope you like this, uh, this gesso look.